We are about three and a half years removed from the start of the pandemic. And while some automakers have been slowly but surely regaining their footing over the last couple of years, there have been other car brands that have really been floundering. And unfortunately, Toyota is one of those floundering brands. Toyota has a long-standing record of being one of the, if not the most popular car brand in the entire world. But despite this, Toyota has really been struggling getting back up on their feet after the pandemic. And in this video, I'm going to be explaining why. And the first reason really comes down to inventory and production. Toyota has had some of the lowest inventory of any automaker for the most part of 2023. And there are a few different reasons why Toyota inventory has been so low, with some of these reasons being unintentional and others, believe it or not, maybe by design. First off is production shortages and delays due to the pandemic. Now, this is a point that I've discussed a lot on my channel, so I'll be brief with this one. COVID created a massive shortage of vehicles due to the parts and material shortages, most notably the chip shortage, labor shortage, and vehicles stopped being produced at the height of the pandemic. And cranking that production back up isn't as easy as just flipping on a switch. It's been a gradual buildup that some automakers are still working towards today. But some of these automakers are doing a better job at cranking back up production compared to others. And unfortunately, Toyota fits in that other category. Toyota has just not been able to ramp up production as quickly as other automakers which is strange because Toyota has long been considered the gold standard of vehicle production efficiency. And yet today, Toyota has been lagging behind nearly every other major vehicle manufacturer. But it's not just COVID-era production issues that are plaguing the brand, it's also sporadic production issues as well. Last week, Toyota had to suspend production at all 14 domestic assembly plants in Japan due to a system failure that prevented Toyota from ordering parts. This resulted in all 28 assembly lines at 14 different plants to be shut down. And while Toyota doesn't as of now know exactly what caused it, they said it was not a cyber attack, which is actually something that happened to Toyota last year, also preventing them from ordering parts and also shut down a number of plants for a day as well. And while shutting down production for one single day may not seem like a lot, it actually is. Currently, Toyota's output is anywhere between 15 and 20,000 vehicles per day, so they're producing this amount on a daily basis. And so whenever you lose a day of production, it can be a killer, especially whenever this brand has already been struggling with production in the first place. And according to expert, this lost day of production could cost Toyota about $360 million. But the thing is, while Toyota production has absolutely been a bumpy road over the years, it doesn't necessarily mean that Toyota is vying to make this production better either. You see, over the years, production numbers for automakers have been struggling, and many people, myself included, have been telling car buyers to simply wait to buy a car until a vehicle production returns to normal. But the thing is, what if vehicle production doesn't return to normal? Back in 2022, the North American Toyota sales chief made a statement to Automotive News stating that Toyota actually wants to keep inventories lower, stating, I'm of the belief that after stabilization of the supply chain, I don't believe it will be necessary for us to go back to a 40 to 45 day strike zone. Prior to the pandemic, it was a pretty normal practice for automakers to have a lot of spare vehicles on hand, which is why dealerships across America have gotten larger and larger. It's why you've been able to go to a dealership, pick out virtually any car you could want and buy it right then on the spot. And because of this, a day supply for automakers was significantly higher pre-pandemic than it is today. But over the last year and a half or so, there has been a trend amongst many major automakers basically stating that the day of supply that they're striving for is decreasing and that automakers in general don't have to strive to keep inventory levels as high as they once were. And instead, they're going to intentionally keep inventory levels low. In the case of Toyota, stated with this automotive news article, they're saying that maybe they don't need to go back to that 40 to 45 day supply that they used to have. And for those of you who don't know what day supply means, basically what it's saying is that it's going to take X number of days to deplete that inventory. So if we're talking about a 45 day supply, that means that Toyota has enough cars where it would take 45 days to deplete that inventory in its entirety a 20 days worth of supply would be 20 days to deplete that inventory. So it gives us a gauge of how many cars each manufacturer and brand has available. And so what Toyota is saying is that they don't believe that they need to go back to that 40 to 45 day supply level that they had previously. And instead they're saying that maybe 30 days would be their sweet spot instead. And if we look at the inventory data from July, which is currently our most up-to-date inventory source, back when this interview was conducted, Toyota said that maybe 30 days would be the goal. And when we look at Toyota inventory, they are currently 
currently right at 30 days. So with that 2022 interview in mind, my question is how much more is inventory going to increase for the brand? If they were previously striving for the 30 day mark and they're currently at about 30 days, I think sure we can probably expect to it to increase from here because there still is a supply and demand issue with Toyota, but how much more can we expect it to increase? And that I don't know. While I wasn't able to find a more up-to-date interview with anyone from Toyota discussing days worth of supply and what they're striving for in present day, you have to think about the fact that this limited supply is definitely playing to the favor of automakers and dealerships because prices for both new and used cars are absolutely through the roof, which truthfully is a win for both Toyota as a brand as well as their dealerships. Which brings me to the second issue with Toyota, which is their astronomical prices. Over the years, Toyota, like many brands out there, has simply become unaffordable. Currently, Toyota's cheapest car in their lineup is the Toyota Corolla, which starts at around $21,000, which is actually better than I thought that it would be, but this is ultimately where affordability goes to die. Outside of the Corolla, Toyota's lineup has become increasingly more expensive, with many of their cars ranging from the high 30s to $60,000 range, with some of their more expensive trims nearing 80 to 100 grand. The truth is, Toyota is just not as affordable as they once were, and the general public is being priced out of Toyota, at least from a new car basis. And this is of course assuming that you can find a new Toyota to buy in the first place, because anybody who has been looking for a Toyota over the last couple of years knows that Toyota dealerships are absolutely miserable to work with. With new Toyotas being priced at dealerships with new made-up form of pricing. Like, when did TSRP become an acceptable measurement of price? With hot new vehicles like the new Tundra, Sequoia, the Prius, RAV4 Prime, and the new Tacoma, which will come out later this year, they will all have, or all currently have, above MSRP prices when it comes to the dealership floors. And this is deterring people from buying these cars altogether. The reality is Toyota, like many brands out there, have increased in price over the last couple of years. But not only has Toyota increased in MSRP at the manufacturer level, but you also have this increase at dealership pricing as well. And the dealership pricing is much less predictable than manufacturer pricing. This makes it incredibly difficult for somebody to want to be incentivized to buy a Toyota and makes it hard to plan to buy a Toyota and you have to wonder even if you can find one within your price range, is the dealership going to be willing to sell it to you for a reasonable price as well? And these are all questions that are really impossible to know and because of that, people are getting deterred from the brand. And last but not least is Toyota's rollout of their new vehicles, specifically their EV lineup as well. Over the last couple of years, Toyota has been updating their lineup. They started with the Tundra and Sequoia, then they moved on to the Prius, then on to the Tacoma, and they recently released a Land Cruiser, which was a car that was briefly discontinued here in the United States, but still no Toyota Foreigner. And while all of these vehicles are exciting, there are a lot of questions related to my previous point. When are these cars actually going to become available? Once they are available, will you be able to find them at dealerships? And if you find them at a dealership, what price are you expected to pay? And again, none of these questions are questions that we have answers to, making it extremely hard to get excited or plan for a new vehicle purchase if you're interested in buying one of these cars. And this doesn't even begin to touch on the extremely slow and painstaking rollout of Toyota EVs. We've been incredibly far behind other companies when it comes to an electric vehicle rollout. Last year, Toyota quietly scrapped their rollout plan, and today their current CEO says that they will roll out 10 new models between now and 2026. But what these models are going to be, how they're going to be priced, and what segment of buyer they're going to be targeting, well, your guess is as good as mine. Like I mentioned a moment ago, the new Toyotas look great, but the fact that we don't know exactly when these Toyotas are going to be available, at what price point, or if we can even afford them because of dealership markups, it definitely puts a cloud over the buying probability of any person who's wanting to purchase one of these cars. And for those car buyers that are considering buying an EV over a gas car, which is currently about one third of car buyers, it makes it even harder to plan a Toyota purchase because you just don't know what type of electric vehicles they're going to be offering. When there are so many exciting electric vehicles out there, it makes it difficult to justify waiting or hoping for a Toyota EV that's worth buying whenever timing has been iffy and pricing is even more of an unknown. The truth is, currently in present day, Toyota is simply lagging behind. Between their production issues, their EV rollout, and their shady dealership pricing, there are simply some better and more predictable options out there for the car buyer that's looking to make their next purchase. Which is a real shame, because all things considered, I do think that the new Toyota lineup is really impressive and really exciting. 
But how exciting can something be if it's inaccessible and unattainable to its target audience, which is exactly what's happening with Toyota. But again, the real question is, will this ever get sorted? And if so, when? Like always, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. So make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.